Steve Sexton, I have Paula Shaw, our transition therapist. Now we're gonna talk about sugar. We're gonna talk about working out. We're gonna talk about, oh geez, watching too much TV, exercise, all those things, but it's not what you think. It's about addictions and it's affecting people. And we've got Paula here to help us about it. Now, Hi, Steve. Welcome mm -hmm. to the show. I'm actually really looking forward to this because I've seen people who are addicted to having plastic surgery, okay? Mm -hmm. And they got way too much money and they've sucked the fat out of their ankles the whole shot, <laughs> okay? I, 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 I was thinking about this and I go, you know what? I just went through one of those big old tubs of licorice in the last four days when I was on vacation. Ooh. And you know, I could be there, okay? <laughs> um, and you know what? When I, when I look at this, I said, you know what? Is it mommy see, mommy do? Uh, what, what, you know, what, what's the situation when it comes to how big is the problem of this with baby boomers and how does it affect their kids or are the kids are going to have a bigger problem? You know, how, how does mm. that all play in? Wow, great question, Steve. Well, first of all, it is a big problem with baby boomers. I think for one simple, well, there are many reasons. I won't say one simple reason, but one of the big ones is boredom you know, a kind of a loss of identity, a loss of purpose. What do I do now if I'm retired? Now, not all baby boomers are retired, but I think as we grow older, we're dealing with a lot of different kinds of losses. You know, I kind of frame a lot of things through that lens of loss because having written that grief book and I look at all the losses we experience in life Every day, we're, we're having some kind of loss, maybe many ones, but there are a lot of losses. So let's look at some of the losses that baby boomers are dealing with. Loss of appearance, like mm -hmm. the woman you were talking about. I assume it's a woman. Well, having... I have loss of hair, so. <laughs> loss of hair, that's right. You know, loss of how we looked when we were young. Loss of our abilities to do all the things we used to do. Feel the way we used to feel. And, and this career thing is a biggie. When, once we retire, we don't have that same identity we had before. We don't have the same routine in our day. We don't have that same sense of purpose. And you don't usually have quite as strict a schedule. So it's so much easier to pour a cocktail at three instead of maybe six after work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to fall into a habit of lunch and wine with the girls, you know, that kind of thing. And it sneaks up on people. And before they know it, they are addicted. Now, I'm just looking at alcohol in that analogy, but you brought up sugar, exercise, work. You know, we can be addicted to anything. And here's the bottom line. All addiction really has one purpose and that is to distract us from our emotional pain. We don't want to feel that sadness or that fear or that anxiety that we're feeling because our lives are changing or because something's going on that we don't feel good about. So have a drink or two or take a prescription med or you know, go run for the second time at the gym or go shopping. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things we can do to avoid our pain. Or eating, or eating. getting on the next diet program, or going to have another surgery. Absolutely. Or, or in my case, another Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the real problems with the eating thing is, you know, abstinence is one way to try to heal an addiction, right? You know, you don't, you don't drink mm -hmm. anymore, you don't smoke anymore, but you have to eat every day. So that one is really insidious. It's really difficult for now, people. Now, let's talk about this. You know what? Does AA really work? AA really does work for certain people. Okay. For other people, it doesn't work as well. Um, there are a couple of things. You know, my clients often say they don't like the idea that they have to say words that say they're powerless. It's part of what people do in AA meetings. I'm powerless over my addiction. You know, and we know in recent research that words have power. There's an energetic vibration to words and it impacts us. So I personally don't like a word like powerless myself, but I think if you can reframe it in your own mind, and this is probably why it works for some people, you're powerless in this arena. You're powerless to pick up that drink and drink it in moderation mm -hmm. or eat the sugar in moderation. Um, and so if you re reframe that properly in your own mind, that word's not such a problem. Other people don't do well because they just don't want to bear their 
dirty linen, so to speak, yeah. in a public setting. And yet, the group energy is one of the reasons AA is very powerful. It can be really helpful for that reason. That's good to know. Now, here's one of the other thoughts. Um, you know what, you heard of tough love. And we see this happen with a lot of teenagers. Uh, and, you know, it, it doesn't really work. Well, my, my motto is kind of like, tough love is tough on everybody. It's like, let's say we're parents and we have a child or a kid, a teenager, mm -hmm. who's acting out and who's doing some kind of drug or alcohol to excess. Who's going to suffer the most? If you tell that kid, you either have to stop drinking or you can't live here anymore. Okay, maybe the kid is now out on the street, but how does mom and dad sleep at night not knowing their child is safe? I mean, it's agony. If you, if you have to take a tough stand with anyone in your life, whether it's an adult or your, your child or whatever, it's equally tough on you, I think. You know, when you love mm -hmm. somebody, you want them to be safe. Now, um, <clears throat> okay, what's the biggest myth about addiction and substance abuse? I think the biggest myth, people have such a misconception. A lot of times they think people who are addicted are either weak or they're, I don't know, you know, like uh, lower class people or that sort of thing. That isn't true at all. A lot of people who suffer addictions are some of the loveliest, most creative, kind, sensitive human beings out there. But doing the drugs or the alcohol or whatever they do helps buffer them from their pain. A lot of times they're some of the bravest, most brilliant, creative people out there. So that myth that they're weak, or they don't try hard enough, or they just don't care, I think is really untrue. Really Paula, untrue. Thank you so much for sharing this light. Yes. It's wonderful. I want you to stick around for next week as well, if you could. Now, if you'd like to get more information, or even you know get a copy of Paula's book, uh, The Grief, When Will the uh, Pain Ever End? Please go to our website at The Silver Hair Tsunami. But next week, this is our July 4th episode. It's very important for people who might be dealing with it or dealing with addiction to get some help. That's why we're bringing in the Clinical Addiction Recovery Institute. It's a wonderful organization. They're going to be able to help us with all this. Stick with us. We'll be right back.